Buckle up, because things are about to get rough. Michael Burry, the guy who predicted the housing crisis, just dropped a bombshell. He says the world is hurtling back to the 1970s, a time of terrifying economic turmoil. Remember those long lines at the unemployment office? They're back, with a statewide jobless rate of a whopping 9.3%. People are desperate. Almost a thousand showed up for a single job opening at City Hall. It's a scene straight out of the 70s, a decade Burry believes we're revisiting. The 70s were brutal. The stock market tanked, unemployment soared, and prices skyrocketed all at the same time for a whole 10 years. Burry's convinced history is repeating because, well, people never learn. He studied the 70s like a hawk and sees the same warning signs flashing now. Inflation is slowing down, sure, but everyone thinks it'll just disappear with the coming recession. Burry isn't so sure. He thinks this is just the beginning of a bumpy ride back to the bad old days. The Federal Reserve, like a plumber managing a giant bathtub, is trying to fix our overflowing economic mess. They pumped in so much money during the pandemic that things got out of hand. Now, they're trying to suck the water back out hoping to bring the economy back to a healthy level. But here's the problem. Burry, our economic detective, sees a hidden danger. He compares the economy to the water level in the tub. The Fed is taking water out, but they are forgetting about the water that spilled all over the floor. That's the money people are holding onto because of the recession. Imagine putting that spilled water back in the tub. Suddenly, the tub overflows again. That's what Burry fears. Even if the Fed keeps draining, the floor money could refill the tub faster, causing another economic flood. Why? Because if prices start dropping, people will go on a shopping spree, spending their cash more often. This is called money velocity. Worst case scenario, money velocity would accelerate, pushing prices back up. A scary echo of the 1970s, when inflation skyrocketed despite the money supply shrinking. The whispers of the 70s are getting louder. Remember that crazy inflation everyone talked about under President Carter? Here we go again. Prices are climbing, and the worst part? People are losing their jobs at the same time. It's like a double whammy nobody saw coming. But things are about to get even more terrifying. According to Michael Burry, he thinks the government might repeat a mistake from the 70s, printing a ton of money. Here's the logic. The Fed raises interest rates to fight inflation, which slows things down. Great, right? But Burry worries they might panic too soon and start printing money again before the economy fully adjusts. Why would the government do such a crazy thing? Burry claims they're not as innocent as they seem. He points out that the Federal Reserve, the guys in charge of the money spigot, sold off all their stocks right before the market crashed in 2021. That's pretty suspicious, right? Burry doesn't trust him to have our best interests at heart. With all these factors colliding, Burry's prediction of a 1970s redux starts to sound a lot less like a crazy theory and a lot more like our harsh reality. But wait, there's more. Remember the dot-com bubble of the late 90s? Back then, companies were popping up left and right, all promising to be the next big thing online. In 1999, there were hundreds of IPOs, initial public offerings, Mostly for these internet companies, fast forward to 2001, and the party's over. The number of IPOs drops like a rock, to just 76. Sound familiar? 2021 saw a similar explosion of IPOs, especially in tech and the internet. We also had these crazy cryptocurrencies that seemed to exist solely to make people rich quick. Just like those internet stocks with no real foundation. And let's not forget the fraudulent schemes 
popping out everywhere reminiscent of Enron and Worldcom from the dot-com bubble. The recession hit and things are starting to unravel. The fraudulent companies are getting exposed and those useless crypto coins are worthless. But Burry the investing whiz who predicted the housing crisis warns that the crash is far from over. Some folks are still clinging to hope trying to buy the dip in these falling stocks and coins. Burry scoffs at this, comparing it to investors who wanted to buy Worldcom stock even as the company's massive accounting fraud was about to be exposed. Burry believes there are more Worldcoms out there just waiting to be exposed. He tweeted a chilling message with a cryptic graph, hinting at a potential 25-35% to 35 market drop in the coming months. So given everything we covered in this video, you might be wondering how an investor like Burry is not only protecting his portfolio, but also profiting from this upcoming trend. But in contrary to what you were thinking, Burry is all set with another bold move. At this time, he's not betting against the market. He's going long. Remember that sky-high inflation everyone was talking about? Well, it's peaked for now. And that's actually a good sign for stocks according to Burry. He even took the Twitter with a cryptic message. I am not short. Well, I've been 6 feet for a while. May get to 1.7 meters in time. Don't worry, he's not growing magically. It's his way of saying he's bullish. Long? On the market, not bearish. Short. With inflation still lingering even as the economy shrinks, Burry's setting his sights on gold. It's a classic safe haven during tough times. A way to protect your money when the dollar weakens. Remember all the hype about Bitcoin being the new gold? Burry thinks that bubbles burst, and gold is poised for a comeback. He even hinted at this before, saying he was waiting for the moment when crypto scandals spilled over and boosted gold's value. Looks like that moment might be here. So, while everyone else is panicking, Bree's making a strategic gold rush. In the current economic landscape, companies generating substantial cash flow are seen as valuable assets. Michael Burry has identified two sectors housing such lucrative companies, one of which includes stocks from Hong Kong. Despite apprehensions among investors about the Hong Kong market due to its connections with China, Burry perceives a significant opportunity there. While many Hong Kong citizens view the stock market as risky and prefer investing in alternatives like bonds and real estate, this sentiment has led to the Hong Kong stock market being markedly undervalued compared to the U.S. market, where stock market investment is encouraged. Despite facing economic strain due to COVID restrictions, Hong Kong's recent relaxation of restrictions on mainland China and other countries has fostered optimism among economists. Recent surveys suggest a revised upward growth forecast for Hong Kong's economy, indicating a shift towards a more positive outlook. Burry highlights the drastic undervaluation of the Hang Seng Index by comparing its current valuation metrics to those of 1997, emphasizing a significant discrepancy despite substantial economic growth over the years. This undervaluation suggests untapped potential with the market. However, for those skeptical of the Hong Kong market, the U.S. market remains an alternative. In other news, former hedge fund manager Michael Burry, known for his role in the big short, has retained his position in the Hong Kong market despite liquidating his other holdings earlier in the year. Additionally, protests are currently underway outside the GIA group in Boca Raton as reported by a Facebook group advocating for food, not bombs, in Fort Lauderdale. Burry's investment strategy extends to U.S. stocks with robust cash flow yields. These yields, determined by dividing free cash flow by equity value, can result from a combination of factors including low valuation, high cash flow, or both. He sees similarities between the current market and the dot-com crash era, anticipating similar success for these cash cows. He perceives the current landscape as even more favorable for such investments compared to 2002, attributing this to companies' improved capital management practices, such as stock buybacks and debt reduction. 
Burry's selection criteria for stocks revolves around high cash flow, low valuations, significant debt, and a competitive advantage. This approach, exemplified by his substantial investment in the Geo Group, a controversial private prison operator, claims to capitalize on post-speculative market conditions. If you like this video, please remember to show some support by clicking the like button, dropping a comment, and subscribing to our channel. I'll see you in the next one.